representing aqueous equations, sorry, aqueous reactions. We have different types of chemical equations. A molecular equation shows the neutral formulas for each compound as if they were molecules. So an example is potassium hydroxide reacting with magnesium nitrate to form potassium nitrate and magnesium hydroxide. We can tell from the state symbols that magnesium hydroxide is the precipitate. All these other compounds are aqueous. So these are the neutral formulas for these compounds. But this does not describe what's really happening in the solutions. These soluble ionic compounds are actually separated into ions. So a complete ionic equation shows all the species as they're actually present in solution. So we would see potassium ion aqueous and hydroxide ion aqueous and magnesium ion aqueous and nitrate ion aqueous and here potassium and nitrate aqueous. This is a solid and so that would not be shown as individual ions. So that shows everything. The complete ionic equations are very long and, and somewhat cumbersome. Um, we usually use what's called the net ionic equation. This shows only the species that actually change. Potassium ion was in solution here, and potassium ion is still in solution there. He did not get involved in a relationship. But magnesium and hydroxide did. Magnesium came in just, you know, kind of, oh, yeah, I'll go to the party with you, but there's no attachment here. But then magnesium met hydroxide at the party, and now they're on the back porch, right? They're a couple. So let's look at how we do this. To write the complete ionic equation, because we just talked about writing the molecular equations. To write the complete ionic equation, you're going to express all the aqueous ionic compounds as ions. So these include um, aqueous, the aqueous strong electrolytes. Those are soluble salts and strong acids and strong bases. Um, if you have a solid, a liquid, or a gas, you can tell those from the state symbols. You just copy those down as they are. Those are insoluble substances, weak electrolytes, non-electrolytes. That includes the weak acids, because they, they do form some ions, but mostly they're in molecular form. So if we take this potassium, I'm uh, sorry, lead nitrate and potassium chloride. This is the molecular equation. To write the complete ionic equation, we're going to look at this first compound, and we see that it's an ionic compound and it's aqueous. So we need to separate it into the individual ions. So there's one Pb2 plus ion. You have to include the charges on ions. And there's two nitrate ions. In one of these units, there's two nitrates. And so we have two nitrate ions, and that's aqueous. The next compound, KCl, is also aqueous. And so we're going to write this as its ions separated. Two KCl means there's two of these units. So we have two potassiums and two chlorides. And then we have the arrow. The next one, PbCl2, this is solid. That's an insoluble compound. It doesn't form ions in solution. And so we just copy that one down as it is. And the last one, potassium nitrate, is an aqueous. It's dissolved, and so we write it as the individual ions. Any questions? Yes? Oh, no. Nope. Okay. When we look at that complete ionic equation, we see that there were two nitrate ions before the reaction happened, and there's two nitrate ions after the reaction happened. Nothing happened to them. They are unchanged. We call those spectator ions. They were watching. You go to a boxing match, and you sit up in the stands as a spectator. Do you come out with a black eye and a bloody nose? No. Unless things got uh, really out of hand, right? But normally, the, the, the people who come to watch the boxing match leave the same as they came in. The two guys in the ring, they get beat up, right? But the spectators don't. The spectator ions are the ones that don't get changed. So we see two NO3 minus here, two NO3 minus still at the end. So we cross them off. 
They didn't participate. They're just hanging around watching. The reaction could occur without them. And potassium is also a spectator ion. So we cross out the spectators, and then we write down what's left. What's left is the lead ion and the chloride ion and the lead chloride solid. And so this is what's called the net ionic equation. It's a little bit like your net paycheck after they took out the taxes and the Medicare and the other stuff, right? The deductions for this, that, and the other thing. Well, if you're lucky, you get a refund check. But the net ionic just tells us what's actually happening. Any questions? Let's do an example. Consider the following reaction occurring in aqueous solution, right? The complete ionic and net ionic equations for this reaction. These get long, and so sometimes they don't fit on one line. So we'll just kind of wrap it around the edge. So the first compound here, HI, it says aqueous. Is this an acid? Well, it starts with H, and it's aqueous, so it is an acid. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Um, the, the book or my slide seems to have left out which are the strong acids. So we've got HCl, HBr, HI. HClO4, HNO3, and H2SO4. Those are the strong acids. So if you have an acid and it's one of these, you separate it into ions. If it's any other acid, you don't. HI is a strong acid. So we have to write that as individual ions. This equation is balanced, and so we want to pay attention to these uh, coefficients so that we don't have to balance it again later. So we get 2 H plus. Somebody asking, how do you know it's a strong acid? Because it's one of the six. That's just something we have to memorize. Right? It's just something you got to know, yeah. Sorry. I know you hate that. I hate telling you that, but... It's a molecular compound that completely ionizes in water. So when we have hydroiodic acid, we don't have any hydrogen iodide molecules. We have hydrogen ions and iodide ions, and they separate completely. HF, hydrofluoric acid, doesn't do that. It's mostly hydrogen fluoride molecules in the water with a little bit of hydrogen ion and a little bit of fluoride ion. So the iodide will also be aqueous. And then we look at the next compound, aqueous. This is an ionic compound. The AQ tells us this is soluble, and so we're going to separate it into ions. So we're going to have barium ion, aqueous, and we're going to have two hydroxide ions. And then we have our arrow. We look at the next compound is water. The state symbol is L for liquid. If it's liquid solid gas, you do not separate it into ions. Only if it's AQ. So this one, we're just going to copy it down as is. Two water molecules, liquid. And then the last one, do we break the last one into ions? Yes. Yeah. I don't know why I put an arrow there. Um, so we've got barium ion. You have to include the charges on the ions. And we've got two iodide ions. Bless you. Any questions? That's the complete ionic equation. It shows all the ions. It's complete. The net ionic, we're going to cross out the spectators. What are the spectator ions in this one? 
barium. There's barium on both sides. And iodine. Iodide. So we cross those guys out. And then to write the net ionic equation, we just copy down what's left. 2H plus aqueous plus 2OH minus aqueous forms 2H2O liquid. Now what should we do to that? Could we simplify the coefficients? Yeah, we could. It's 2, 2, and 2. We could just go with 1, 1, and 1. So. Is that considered balancing? It is considered balanced with the 2, 2, 2, but it's better in the lowest. And I'm not sure what mastering chemistry does with that. But any questions? So the second one's the net ionic? This is the net ionic. So that's the net ionic. Because it just shows what's actually being changed. And this one up here is called the complete ionic equation. It shows all of the ions. Any other questions? I think we'll call it we'll call it good.